Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? I don't have a monitor, so. Oh, wonderful. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jose, and I'm here to give you a brief introduction to identity management. Uh, but before we start, um, I would like to talk a little bit about digital identity. Um, it's digital identity is a very broad term. Um, it sounds very broad. Um, so when you initially say digital identity, it can get a little bit confusing. So what is digital identity? Uh, is it like getting your documents uh, digitalized, uh, your driver's license, your passport, your ID card, those kind of things? Um, digital identity is related to your digital footprint, but that still sounds um, very broad. So basically, digital identity is who you are in the digital world. Um, it still sounds very broad. So um, to narrow it down a little bit more, digital identity is usually represented by credentials. Um, so uh, username, password, uh, your email, your phone number, um, something that identifies you as who you are into that um, service application. Digital identity is not universal, which means that one service will not be able to access the your digital identity in another service. Um, and it's used to, compar to compartmentalize and personalize your experience in different services or, or applications. So um, you will, um, based on your digital identity, you will get different parts of the service, different views of the service, let's say a social network like Twitter. Um, it uses your username and password credentials to show you your specific feeds, your specific views, uh, what you want to see, the people who you follow, um, your profile, it'll give you access to edit your profile and your profile only so you don't uh, touch other person's uh, profiles and, and so on. So in general, with digital identity, uh, as users, we are giving our information out to the service. And as developers, we are collecting the information from our users. Um, again, a username, password, email, SMS, um, SMS number, a phone number, um, or something that allows them to identify themselves as who they are. Um, and with that in mind, I would like to get into managing identities. Um, I, I want this to be a very uh, high level talk. Uh, I want to make this uh, very short and sweet so I can answer your questions. Um, so if you have any questions, save them up for the end. I will have a round of questions, so um, do have them in mind. Uh, when managing identities, you have to understand you have more than just a username and password. Um, as I was mentioning, you can have uh, an email address, a phone number, you can have uh, an address, if you'd like, a physical address. There are a number of ways in which you can um, identify a specific user for your application. Um, and when you're managing identities, users can also trust you with their personally identifiable information. So when they give you your, their email address, they're trusting you with, some, with something. When they're giving you their phone number, that's even a little bit more trust. Uh, it's a way to reach them out directly into the real world to um, imagine as you were paging them. Um, or if you, you give them, if they give you your, uh, their address, you can send them mail, you can send them stuff, um, you can get social security numbers, you can get ID numbers. And stuff can get pretty rough uh, uh, when you start managing identities. You have to consider that um, when you are developing an application. Um, and I want to give you some tips bef uh, on what you should do before, during, and after managing an identity. So let's start this as a story. Uh, you are an open source developer. You want to develop your application. And it comes to the point where you need your users to identify against your service. So you can provide them certain parts of uh, access levels or views to specific feeds depending on their preferences. Or, or so on. Um, so before you do that, you have to have set a privacy policy. That's very important. Um, privacy policies, if you haven't read one of those, and I highly suggest that you do, 
um, are basically the um, it's it's a long legal description on how you are going to handle the the personally identifiable information or in general all of the information that the user is providing you um, to be able to do the different things that you want to do with your application um, it helps the user understand in which ways the information is going to be used how it's going to be treated how it's going to be shared with other parties and in general again how you are going to use that information and it's very important you, that you make it very clear in this privacy policy how you're going to treat this information because at the end of the day it's a legal document that you need to uh, uphold for and then you also should use secure transfer protocols so you need to make sure that before you even start collecting this kind of personally identifiable information or username, password, credentials, emails, phone numbers, you set up, for example, HTTPS uh, in your website that you uh, make sure that no man-in-the-middle attacks can happen. So set up SSL certificates, um, verify the requests that are coming in and that are coming out. During the identity management process, um, you need to, again, ensure that you are using the secure transfer protocols. This is not only for your website, but also for your overall um, identity management authentication process. At some point, you are going to require the user to enter their uh, username, password, credentials. Uh, you should always uh, use HTTPS when dealing with these kind of requests. You also need to safely secure the data, and by this I mean uh, encrypting the data in your, in your databases. If you are storing uh, a password for a user, even though you shouldn't be doing this, some people share passwords across their accounts. I highly recommend that you don't. But some services like to store these passwords in plain text, and that is just not a good idea. What happens if your database um, for some reason gets leaked. Uh, if someone gets access, unauthorized access to your database, all of that information is going to be made available publicly uh, for, for that user who shouldn't be exposed to that information. They will be able to grab it and access your service with your credentials because they were stored in, pla in plain text, and they will be able to modify whatever information you had uh, access to they can use that same plain text password to try and get into your other accounts for different other services. So it's a good idea to encrypt the data. If you are um, storing personally identifiable information, if you're storing username passwords, make sure to encrypt them, to hash them, to solve them. Take all the necessary precautions in order to make sure that passwords are safe. There are not enough precautions that you can take. So double check, triple check that the information is going to be safe for everyone um, in, since the users are trusting them with uh, something so valuable. Oh, there we go, sorry. Um, you need to ensure that, again, this data is not going to be leaked. And finally, you need to prevent abuse. Um, there is, there can be a brute force attack on your side. People can start trying with password dictionaries, and it can start getting messy if, um, if people just try and, and keep on attempting passwords. Again, it's not recommended that you use something like password123 as your password, which is one of the most popular passwords in the United States. But um, if you do use it and there's a brute force attack in your, in your application and your application is not secured, you're uh, giving access again to this user to modify the information that the, the user that, that was hacked um, should have access to and only them. And after you, um, after you manage the identity, if the user for some reason would like to uh, get their information back, if they would like for uh, their information to be deleted, the user is the only owner of their information. Their uh, you are not the owner of, of that information. You, you need to make sure that the user is always uh, able to manage that identity that they have because at the end of the day, it's what represents them in your application. 
and keep your word on the privacy policy that you initially wrote because again, it's a legal document that you need to uphold by. Um, in general, um, and I will say this at the end as well, use your common sense when managing identities. Treat other, pe uh, other people's identities as you would treat your own. Make sure that everything is secure. Uh, there are no enough protocols to secure the information. There's never enough precautions that you can take. So if you wanna take an extra step, that's never bad. Now I'd like to get a little bit more technical on the user authentication aspect of, of your application. So when you're authenticating a user and when you're managing identities, you have three involved parties. One is the service provider, which will basically allow you to authenticate a user against an identity provider, which is the second party. An identity provider holds the information for the user. It stores the username, password, or uh, phone number credentials. And finally, there's your application or your service, which will use the service provider's authentication flow to get the information for the user and ensure that, again, everything is valid. It'll take that information, process it, and allow the user to authenticate. So this is a basic authentication flow. Uh, your application contacts the service provider. The service provider contacts the identity provider. It uh, and the identity provider validates the credentials that you are uh, that you have given. Uh, the identity provider then comes back to the service provider saying, "Yes, these credentials are valid. This is the this is the information that you requested from the user." The service provider forwards forward that's uh, back to your application, and then basically you are in. So. That's a very basic authentication flow for um, uh, an application that you can be developing. Um, and these authentication flows can vary. Um, you can add multi-factor authentication in several parts. You can add several other validations. If you'd like, you can add other components, other providers, and so on. So you can take this as a reference uh, if you're developing something and you want to authenticate users. Um, but again, uh, this is the you could say, bare flow of a user authentication. And in order to authenticate users, you have two options. You can build an in-house service provider and identity provider, which basically takes a lot of effort. Um, you can build it from scratch. You can create your own databases. You can secure your databases, ensure that you have an authentication flow with secure uh, protocols um, between the service provider, the identi identity provider, and your end application. Or you can use widely available services. I personally like and use Auth0, uh, which is open source friendly. Um, they have SDKs uh, and they have an open source plan that um, basically allows you to use their features. And in general, uh, these, these kind of services already have the components built in so you can just follow with the flow and integrate certain parts and you don't have to do all the messy work of securing your applications, um, securing the databases. It basically allows you to um, take just take care of interpreting the information that you have to get back from uh, the identity provider uh, or, or the service provider at the end. So again, these are two very different options that you can, uh, that you can use. If you would like to have full control if you want to understand the flow from zero until the end, you can build an in-house service or identity provider, or otherwise you can use one of the uh, widely available services uh, that's out on the web. Um, I don't know, uh, to be honest, if there are any open source uh, alternatives to authentic user authentication flows because at some point um, the user data needs to be protected. So some of these specifications, at least for several of these services need to be proprietary, um, so the user information cannot be easily compromised. But um, I'm pretty sure that um, otherwise uh, it's, uh, you can go through and, and build an in-house solution for, for an SP or IDP. And then I would like to touch base on a topic that's been widely discussed in the past few months, uh, GDPR, uh, which is the General Data Protection Regulation of the European Union. Um, it sounds very scary. Um, when it came out, 
people were freaking out uh, about what it meant, what it uh, implied, how things were going to change in, in the future months and how things are changing right now because companies are still trying to adapt to it. Uh, it was established on May 25th of the present year. And in general, GDPR is intended to unify and strengthen data policies across the European Union and for European citizens. Uh, and what I'm going to tell you is definitely not legal advice. Uh, it's very high level. Um, if you want to get more information about GDPR, how it affects your specific application, company, or service, you should contact a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer, so by any means, don't take this as legal advice. Um, and these are the points that GDPR is trying to enforce into applications. First, um, it wants applications to ask the user for consent to use their information. It just <coughs> Applications should not just grab the user information and use them as they would like. Um, with GDPR, it's asking to, for applications to ask the user for consent so that users are knowing what their information is being used for. Just like with the privacy policy, um, they want users to be aware of what the information is being used for and what will be used for in the future if there's unauthorized access or if there's an extra access level that you need to give, the users are aware of that. It also wants the users uh, to have the right to access, correct, and erase the data. If you change your name, if you're change your, changing your ID number, your bank account number, it wants to give you the opportunity to correct that data. If something's wrong, you should be able to edit it. You should also be able to access the information that the service is holding about you because you should know what your information is to ensure, that, again, that it's accurate, that's up to date, and that they don't have any extra information that you wouldn't like for them to hold. And finally, uh, you should have the right to erase this data, meaning that if for some reason um, you don't want you da your data to be in that service anymore, you should be able to quickly erase it. It also asks for data minimization, and this is where it starts getting a little bit scary. Uh, but in general, data minimization means that services should only hold the information, your personal information, when they need to use it. Uh, and they should only hold the information that they need for their service to work. Meaning, if they're not going to call you, they shouldn't have your phone number. If they're not going to send you actual mail, physical mail or packages, they shouldn't have your address. They shouldn't have duplicate profiles. Stuff like that. On the other hand, it asks for data portability, which means that you should be able to get a copy of your information in a portable format in, and machine readable. So for example, you should be able to request the service or company for a JSON extract of your user data of what they have, and they should be able to provide it. And um, finally, it says that they should secure and protect user data. <coughs> And this means that every uh, piece of information that they have from you should be secured, encrypted. Um, it should be hushed, sold. If you have passwords, um, you have to ensure that the data is protected against attacks. And now the big question is, does GDPR affect you or your company? If you're a European company, you have to uphold for GDPR uh, by GDPR for every single user that you have. Also, if you process the data of European citizens, you should uphold by GDPR for these users. But in general, GDPR is setting what's what could be called a ba the base grounds for user information um, uh, management. And it wants the users to be able to control the information that they are providing to different services. So you do have to uphold it if you're a European company or if you process the data for, of European citizens. For those specific users, you do have to. But in general, you should be able to follow these guidelines to ensure that the 
uh, information that you have for users is well management. And it also covers personally identifiable information, which means that if you uh, have um, the full name, if you have the ID number, if you have the bank account of, um, of a user, that's what it's going to cover. It's not going to cover, for example, uh, their favorite color, their favorite band, their favorite food. It's going to cover what affects what would affect the life of a person, their name, uh, address, again, telephone number, bank accounts, those kind of things. And finally, I want to end up with some best practices. <coughs> um, I highly recommend multi-factor authentication, preferably physical. Multi-factor authentication is um, it's a way of stepping up on the security of your application. Um, so the first factor would be, for example, a username password. And once you validate that username and password, you can trigger a multi uh, second factor authentication by sending an SMS, uh, push notification, an email, or you can request for a physical device to be inserted in the machine. So that way, you have two ways of verifying that the user is actually the user who it's asking for. <coughs> um, you can also set rate limits through IP tables. You should always use HTTPS. There's a Firefox extension called HTTPS Everywhere that can help with this. You should also try to encrypt and sign your requests wherever possible. Decrypt is a hashing mechanism that's widely used. And finally, use your common sense when trying to manage identities. Um, this is my contact information should you need to reach me. And I don't know if we have time for questions. Uh, yeah, you can take a few if you want there. Okay, um, I'll take a couple questions if anyone has any. Go ahead. Um, are you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I actually just want to do a slight correction on something. With GDPR, when it comes to the ability to correct, uh, erase, or get copies of data, it's not just PII. If you have anything about the user, their profile information like favorite color, uh, any history of anything they've done on your site, all of that is covered by GDPR's requirements to be able to erase. Wonderful, thanks. Any other questions? Do you have a view on Gibson's Squirrel? I'm sorry? Gibson's Squirrel as a login mechanism. I don't. No. Sorry. Any more questions? Uh, it won't go through a live stream. I mean, unless you can shout really loud enough. So have you got any comments on the Shrimps versus Facebook case uh, over GDPR? Um, where it stands now? I don't have any comments on that in apart from the fact that you should be using your common sense on how you would uh, use every user's personal information. In general, uh, treat the user's information as you would treat yours. If you don't want to be uh, if you don't want other companies to know where in which hotel you're staying, don't ask for that information or try to track it. Any more questions? <laughs> if you are shy, if you're too shy to ask right now, you can reach me through Twitter or email, and I would be happy to take your questions there. Or you can find me in the hall or at lunch. Um, so, just a comment on the uh, open source um, identity provider. Um, we've actually using uh, free IPA for that, um, for our open source stuff. Um, so it's uh, a, a bit like Active Directory, only it's Red Hat based, um, and it's a lot uh, more free. But you can use open protocols like Kerberos and uh, LDAP to, to talk stuff. So you actually don't need anything proprietary for that. Wonderful. That's great news. So any other questions or tips? I know this is a very in-depth and uh, it, it could 
be an in-depth and complicated topic, especially when you're managing user data. Um, so I think we'll, we're going to leave it for, um, there for now. Um, again, this is my contact info. Don't forget to change your passwords regularly. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach, you, to reach out to me. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Jose.